Good morning all. I am Fatima Kaim, roll number 95. And today we are going to discuss about minerals. So minerals are essential for the normal growth and maintenance of our body. And these minerals are obtained from the food we take and the, it comes from the soil in which the plant grows. So we can classify minerals based on the amount required for our body. If the daily requirement is above 100 mg per day, then there are major elements or macro elements and if it is less than 100 mg per day, they are known as minor elements or trace elements or micro elements. And there are some toxic elements, non-essential elements etc. So anyways, today we are going to discuss about two major minerals that is chlorides and sulfides. So let's start with chlorides. We'll discuss about uh, its normal levels, functions, excretion, the variation in normal level and chloride channels and the cystic fibrosis which is associated with chloride channels. So let's start. So in plasma, the chloride level is about 96 to 106 milli equivalent per liter and in CSF, it is 125 milli equivalent per liter. So, comparing to other body fluids, the CSF has the highest concentration of chloride ions. It is to maintain dawn and equilibrium. That is in CSF, the protein is less. So, chloride levels are increased to maintain dawn and equilibrium. Okay, now chloride has a lot of important function that we in our respiratory system and in our digestive system. So, as you all know, chloride ions are involved in formation of HCl and gastric juice, which helps in protein digestion. And also, as part of digestion, uh, the chloride ions activate salivary amylase, which helps in digestion of sugars. And in carbon dioxide transport and respiration, we know about chloride shift or hamburger phenomena, where chloride is exchanged with bicarbonate. So, the chloride ions play an important role in respiration. And in the formation of hemin. Hemin is formed when chloride ions combine with ferrous ions. That is, uh, uh, ferrous ions and chloride ions combine to form hemin. So that's the function of chloride ions, major functions. HCl formation, chloride shift, activation of salivary amylase, and hemin formation. So now the excretion of chloride ions. So mainly chloride ions are go out of our body through urine and sweat. And the daily excretion is about 5 to 8 gram per day. And renal threshold is 110 milli equivalent per liter. So, absorption, secretion and regulation of chloride ions in our renal tubules takes place along with Na+, that is sodium chloride, NaCl, so sodium and chloride are almost together. So, the reabsorption of chloride ions occurs in ascending limb, uh, which is impermeable to water, and in the distal tubules and collecting that. So, the mechanism is aldosterone regulated. So aldosterone increases the reabsorption of sodium and chloride ions. So that's about the excretion. And let me remind you of a, uh, of a compound frusamide, which acts on the ascending limb and inhibits chloride reabsorption and also the sodium reabsorption. Okay, now let's talk about the variations in normal level. The normal level in plasma was about 96 to 106 milli equivalent per liter. And we may have hyperchloremia where the chloride level rises above the normal levels or hypochloremia where the chloride level low is decreased below, the, uh, decreased below the normal levels. So let's look into the causes of hyperchloremia. Dehydration. Yes, when more water is lost, there will be hyperchloremia. What in the uh, kidney tubules, water is lost and the ions Na plus and uh, Cl minus are reabsorbed. So chloride level rises. 
In Cushing syndrome, mineralocorticoids are increased, which causes a reabsorption of chloride ions from kidney tubules. And next case is severe di- diarrhea. Here there will be a loss of bicarbonate. So, as a compensatory mechanism, the chloride levels will be raised. And next in renal tubular acidosis. So, that's about hyperchloremia. Now, hypochloremia, the causes. The most common cause is excessive vomiting. So, chloride ions are present in HCl in our gastric juice. So, when there is excessive vomiting, more HCl is lost. So, there will be a lower level of chloride ions. And uh, as a compensatory mechanism, plasma bicarbonate will rise. This will lead to hypochloremic alkalosis. Hypochloremic because chloride levels are lowered. And alkalosis as the bicarbonate levels are raised. So next, next is excessive sweating. So in excessive sweating, as I told before, uh, chloride goes out of our body through sweat. So if there is excessive sweating, more chloride loss. And in Addison's disease. In Addison's disease, the levels of aldosterone lowers. So renal uptake of chloride ion is also reduced. So we will discuss about the variation in normal levels of chloride ions. So let me tell you something about the chloride channels. CFTR or cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator protein is a major chloride transport channel. And uh, it is opened by GABA and glycine. And um, you must have heard of cystic fibrosis. This disease is caused by a mutation in the cystic fibrotic gene in chromosome 7. So let's discuss something about cystic fibrosis. So as I told you, it is due to defective chloride transport. And the level of chloride ions in sweat is, will be above 60 millimol per liter. And the uh, conditions which, why, uh, through which the patient appears will be that uh, there will be abnormal thick mucus production and chronic bacterial infections of airways and sinuses. So the pulmonary tract and the respiratory tract will be affected with mucus lodging. Then there will be fat maldigestion. That is because of pancreatic fibrocystic disease. The pancreas will be affected and uh, liver and gallbladder will also be affected and uh, there will be lowered bile production. And the fat digestion will be abnormal. So there will be fat maldigestion. And the next is infertility in males. It is due to uh, the lower development of vas deferens. And progressively it will lead to death at a young age. So this is a simple pictorial representation which shows, which gives a uh, summary of cystic fibrosis. So the chloride ions are not let into the cells and main feature which we observe is thick mucus secretions which affect the lungs. Then the pancreas, liver, testes, salivary glands etc. are affected. And in the lungs there will be decreased air flow, decreased gas exchange and there will be respiratory infections because of mucus lodging. And in pancreas, liver and uh, gallbladder there will be decreased bile production and other digestive enzymes, this will lead to fat maldigestion. And as I told before, testis is also, testis function is also impaired and there will be infertility in males. So there we finish this chloride. We discuss its normal levels, the variation in normal levels, then hypochloremia, hyperchloremia, then how it is excreted, the chloride channels, and cystic fibrosis. So the normal level of chloride in plasma is 96 to 106 milliequivalent per liter. And the common cause for hypochloremia is excessive vomiting. And dehydration will lead to hyperchloremia. And two diseases, Cushing syndrome will cause hyperchloremia and Addison's disease will cause hypochloremia. Okay, now let's talk about sulfur. Sulfur is also a major mineral or a macromolecule. So let's talk about its sources, normal levels, functions and excretion. So sources. 
we know about the two sulfur containing amino acids cysteine and methionine so they are a source of sulfur and proteins containing 1% sulfur by weight and food substances like cabbage kale etc so inorganic sulfate to available in food are not utilized and the normal level of sulfur in serum is 3.5 mg per 100 ml so sulfur as i told it is a component of the two sulfur containing amino acids cysteine and methionine so they are a constituent of body proteins and uh, many polypeptides are made stronger by disulfate bond like insulin and immunoglobulin and the formation of chondroitin sulfate and thus uh, cartilage and bone structure formation and sulfur is present in hair and nails which contain keratin and uh, thiol group that is ss activating group is present in enzymes and peptide so it is involved in various metabolic activities and in various coenzymes which are derived from thiamine biotin pantothenic acid also contain sulfur and detoxification sulfur is involved in detoxification that is paps phosphoadenosine phosphosulfate it transfers sulfur during the uh, second process of detoxification so that's the function of sulfur body proteins hair nails bone cartilage and enzymes peptides coenzymes and paps now the excretion of sulfur so sulfur is excreted in the form of sulfate group this conversion occurs in the liver where all sulfur groups are oxidized into sulfur into uh, sulfate not sulfur into sulfate so 1 gram per day of sulfur is excreted and the sulfates excreted may come under three categories inorganic sulfate organic sulfate or ethereal sulfate a neutral sulfate or oxidized sulfur so uh we have to remember that sulfate group is excreted and it may be in the form of inorganic sulfate organic sulfate or ethereal sulfate and neutral sulfate or oxidized sulfur so sulfur deficiency so all these minerals uh, the de- their deficiency comes when the food we intake is not rich in that mineral that is the plants they do not grow in that so- I mean, uh, soil rich in that mineral so sulfur deficiency will lead to memory loss because sulfur helps in the growth of uh, hippocampal cells so there will be memory loss and obesity and acne so these are some of the sulfur deficiency diseases memory loss obesity and acne so friends i am concluding here we discuss about the two major minerals chloride and sulfur so both of these have lots of major function in our body respiratory function digestive function and many other function so let's uh, conclude our section thank you